Hello, this is Neil Allen, the creator of the comic series That's One Multiversal Guardian, and I'm here with my girlfriend. And my girlfriend got me these glasses uh, for Christmas. Can you tell people anything about these here? Yeah, um, I got them because they have a magnifying lens on them. There's different magnifications from 2.5 all the way to 25 times magnification. Yeah, so you could remove the lens and put another one in there that has a different magnification. Yeah, um, I also liked them because they keep your hands free since they just sit on your face and they also have a light on the side. Yeah, let me, this is, this is causing me some problems I, here. I think you were just putting it in the wrong way. Yeah, the light on the side works like uh, this. So, like, if you're having problems, if you're having problems, like, seeing your work, then this will help. And also, since I'm inking, we're going to be doing some inking here, traditional inking. And since, um, when you're doing traditional inking, you don't have, like, a zoom function. So that's where these, like, magnify, that's where these glasses... The other side, darling. Are you sure? Because yeah. it seems like it's in. It's the small side. Are you sure? Okay, that's in there. Yeah. I've been using the glasses. I mean, I haven't had them very long, but I've been using them. And they do work really well. So before what I was doing was using a magnifying glass to, like, get really good, um, to, like, take care of very detailed areas with ink ink. But this makes it so I have two hands free. Plus, there's a light on this, too, so I can just wear these glasses. Now, um, they aren't meant specifically for, like, this type of artwork, correct? Right. They're actually for, like, um, watch repair and jewelry making. So the higher magnifications don't work as well because you have to be quite close to the thing you're working on. Yeah, your literal face has to be, like, up close to it. Yeah, um, if I were... To do a little bit more research, I'm sure I could find something that has lower magnification that would work better for art. These just seemed really nice, and um, so I went ahead and got them. But the lowest, the 2.5 times magnification, is what you said works best for you. Yeah, this particular lens. It comes with, like, I don't know how many lenses, honestly. Here is the box here. Like, this is what they, it came in. So, I would recommend that these are all the lenses that it comes with. We have those too, it's just I'm keeping them stored in the box. Yeah. Um, so, we're going to work on some inking I'll put on the glasses. And I'm going to be using my girl. My girlfriend has a collection of very fancy fountain pens here. Um, so, can you tell us somewhat about these? Yeah. Uh, my. Why don't you tell them? While, while I'm making. Okay. Your... My grandfather is really into pens, and um, he kind of got me really into pens as well. So, he, they, my grandparents got me a Pilot, actually. Um, this is not a Pilot pen. I can't remember what brand it is, but... Um, it looks nice, and it has a good weight to it. It starts with a G. I'm, I can't remember, like Guillaume or something. Okay. But I really like fountain pens. Um, you can get different nibs that have different sizes. So right now you're using a size 3. This is a 3, huh? I see. It kind of seems like it. Yeah, it's a, it's a 3. So I have one that is um, a 6. I have another one that's a 5. I believe that the same size, like, um, these are technical drawing pens, microns. Like, this is a 2. I believe that probably likely the size um, correlates the same. It could be. The nice thing about this fountain does like pens, feel like a three, like in micron or technical drawing pen size. Sorry for interrupting. Go oh, on. it's fine. Um, the nice thing about the fountain pen nibs is they are a little bit flexible. There's some bounce to them. Yeah. So it is a size three. Um, you don't have to press very hard on the paper for the ink to come out and it's it works through gravity but if you did put a little bit of pressure on it you could get a slightly fatter line like a little bit larger line um, mm -hmm. I don't okay. recommend 
pushing really hard because you can actually bend the nib and and like put it out actually oops her like glove i think how far does her glove come up i thought it was way up there but i think it's like here. down there well that kind of so, looks like maybe a stray hair so you could probably well here's how we'll take care of that when you're inking there are a lot of ways to you know fix your mistakes and things like that so it's not the end of the world plus if push comes to shove we can just literally go over it with white if we wanted to yeah um, um but yeah i really like fountain pens i think that they're really beautiful mm -hmm. it's kind of an art to them there are these people called nib masters that can fix your nibs if they get out of funk and um yeah, and uh, the lines that you get from, like, these types of nibs are different than those you would get from, like, a technical drawing pen like I just showed you. Oh, no, that actually does work, because she has, like, a sleeve that, like, comes up. Her oh, char okay. This character's name is Vasha. She's, like, a sort of a rebel, you know, like, um... She's a sort of a freedom fighter type of individual. I see. So, yeah, the lines that you would get from this type of nib are different from a technical drawing pen and I actually like prefer dip pens and fountain pens over those because of that like you get a more interesting line it's um, less <clears throat> um, it's less uniform like a technical drawing pen is good for giving you like panel borders like this just mm -hmm. dependable straight line but um, I do prefer inking with like a uh, brush and um, fountain pens and dip pens over that overall though I do think all the different utensils like have their place you know yeah um, for sure I mean they they all do different things so depending on what outcome you're looking to get kind of depends on which utensil you would use yeah the ink seems nice too what can you tell me about that um, actually my friend Emma is she also really likes fountain pens and she had a bunch of these ink cartridges um, but she didn't have a pen that they fit so mm -hmm. she gave them to me um, she wasn't even sure what type of fountain pen went with the ink cartridges and I told mm -hmm. her that my papa doc could probably take one look at them and figure out exactly what kind of pen they belonged to so she gave them to me and I took them to him my grandfather and yeah, just for context, <laughs> yeah, I realized I Papa did that. Doc is her grandfather. He's a ER doctor. I realized Hence, I hence the name. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I took them to him, and he he knew exactly what kind of pen they went to, and actually ordered that blue one that you're holding. He ordered um, specifically for the ink cartridges. Oh, really? So that I could use them. Yeah. Oh, the, oh, so he ordered the pin around the cartridge. Yes. Oh, that's cool. Um, so, I mean, oftentimes you'll have the pen and then you'll you'll get the ink to go with it, but I just happened to have it backwards. Yeah. Um, I wasn't sure, you know, there was a fairly good chance he might have had a pen that already fit those cartridges. Mm -hmm. um, he just, he didn't happen to, so he just ordered them. So we're just adding in some detail in here. Um, okay, so you're a big fan of Disney, Disney and Disney princesses, right? Yeah, I like Disney quite a bit. Well, you said that you had some problems with them. Oh, yeah, I forgot you were saving that discussion. Yeah, I thought it would be, I don't actually even know what they are, I just thought it would be interesting because, um, it seems something that you feel kind of strongly about. Well, there are multiple ways of looking at pretty much any problem, and mm -hmm. um, so it kind of goes back to like the grim fairy tales, and and just fairy tales in general around that era. Um, the Grimm brothers, I'm sure, haven't recorded all fairy tales, but a lot of them were recorded from them. So oftentimes those fairy tales are seen as pretty dark, yeah. and. Um, maybe even traumatizing for children in a way. So Disney kind of took a lot of fairy tales from around the world and, you know, Disneyfied them, I suppose right. you could say. Made them much happier and um, more lively and fun, not quite as dark and dreary. 
However, one of the reasons the fairy tales were pretty dark was they served as warnings. Um, there was a lot of like metaphors mm -hmm. that you kind of could draw from the fairy tales and they were supposed to be like lessons. Yeah. So Are Disney Are you still getting this? Yeah. Okay. So Disney, you um, said that. okay, go on. So Disney basically. One of the things, let me interrupt, I'm sorry. Like when you are inking a tip is, you know, you don't want to just, especially with this type of ink, with dip pens, brushes, fountain pens, technical drawing pens tend to draw fa or dry faster than those. So with these types of utensils, you, you got to be careful like where you're placing your hand. So it doesn't smear. Yeah, so you yeah. don't smear it, so you don't create a really big mess. I'm just adding some finishing touch details to some of the things I've been inking here, if you couldn't tell. So I'm kind of jumping around the page a bit. So I, I have to be like especially careful um, not to like do that. Um, but go on, you said something like Disney was not good kind of not good that's what i'm getting to little girls i think you yeah said. that's what i'm getting to so the these older fairy tales um were teaching lessons and disney kind of took all of the lessons away in I their see. their new rendition so um while disney is very fun for little girls it can be a bit detrimental to young girls in a, in a way because it kind of teaches this well, firstly, this kind of damsel in distress type of attitude. Um, not so much with their newer princesses. They're getting kind of away from that. Um, um, just to go over what I'm doing. Um, I want to reinforce the lines that I did on these figures here. Mm -hmm. This is all the same guy. It's like he's rushing and doo -doo 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 -doo, boom, he's going to jump off this railing. Um, his line weight is kind of too similar to me to the background here. Mm. So I'm going to like reinforce his line weight up to get him to pop a bit more. So um, you think they're de Disney's detrimental to little girls? It can it be. It, it teaches them a bit of a damsel in distress. Some of the older princess stories for sure. A damsel in distress type of attitude. And there's kind of this overall very happy, happy ending. Um, which isn't necessarily bad per se. But I've actually seen other people talk about Disney and its effects on, like, young girls mm. as well. Um, and it's, so it's not just my idea. It's actually not even a, my own idea that I've taken to. I've just heard about it and I kind of agreed with it, I guess. I see. So you think this, the tales are too cleaned up? Maybe a too bit. too sanitized. They're, they're too... Yeah. Un, like unrealistically happy well i mean we're good. getting into like interesting stuff here but you do have like a gothy side to you and that's true so um but i i guess it's there are like valuable lessons that were that used to be taught to young girls through the fairy tales and um they're not really the the fact that the fairy tales aren't teaching lessons in and of itself isn't necessarily a but bad you don't idea. like the original idea of those things being changed and altered not necessarily the but issue? also there's nothing replacing those uh lessons like those lessons just got replaced and that's it like nothing else is teaching these girls that lesson oh i can understand so like the story of red riding hood was a warning against men, um, like bad men taking advantage of you as a, as a girl, a young girl and a young woman. I see. Um, and that warning in that fairy tale doesn't really get portrayed to young girls anymore outside of that fairy tale, which no longer gets told. I understand. In a way that they can really understand. I mean, I know that people will probably say, well, I tell my children, but... Um, a lot of people just 
don't do that as well. A as lot of they people should. don't, and just telling your children, but them not really understanding the weight behind it, you're not really protecting them from anything. And most of the time, you have to learn. You have to kind of learn the hard way, in a sense. That's that's not good. Like, but, well, yeah. I just mean, you know, parents saying, "Don't do this," but yeah. there's no reason as to why. Like, what are the consequences? You just don't do it. That's that's not a good enough reason to keep someone from not doing it. Understood. So getting back to inking, there are a couple tips I have. Like right now, I don't. I'm bent over my work. What I would recommend doing if you want to be a comic artist, if you want to be an inker, get some of those posture corrector um, things that you can. Like they have like a Velcro on them. It's mm -hmm. kind of like this harness looking thing. You could get some pretty cheap. Um, I would recommend if you're going to be sitting in front of your art bent over it, like for extended periods of time, get one of those things and wear it, you know, so that you could relieve some of the strain um, of being hunched over your work. Because obviously that's not a healthy position to be in for extended periods of time. Um, there was another thing I was going to say. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so different uh, nib sizes are important. See, because this area on his face here... That's really delicate, and honestly, I think that this nib is too... I can, I can do it, but I why, why I shouldn't have to put myself through um, using a nib this big to like get these details on his face, because I don't want to mess up. It's very delicate. So it is important to have different nib sizes, like whether you're using dip pens, fountain pens, technical drawing pens... Like, so just to give you an example, I am going to switch this out here, and I'm going to go to um, some of my technical pins here. These are just uh, microns, very common among manga artists, comic artists, and a lot of people. This is a very small size, 005, so this is the smallest size I have in this set. I'm going to do, like, some of the fine stuff with this micron versus this fountain pen simply because um, this is a smaller nib. Now you do have different nib sizes in the fountain pens too, right? Yeah. Um, I actually, I think most of mine are larger than the three, but mm -hmm. I'd have to check. I see. Yeah, three is a good general size, you know. But sometimes when you need this really tight detail, it's a little too thick. And I want really tight. Because when you're a comic artist and an inker, you are you see how small this stuff is. Like, this is my finger. You're working at such a small scale that you need very fine detail. And when I was first getting into this, I'm going to switch back. I didn't... It seems like such common sense things to just know but I didn't know all of that I didn't have all the tools that I needed so it was just like I used what I had and sometimes they just weren't the right tools for the job so like if I had a pen to ink with it was just that pen and it's supposed to like serve me for every inking task I had and it doesn't work like that honestly or at least it shouldn't you have to use you know there are certain tasks that some tools are obviously better suited for than others um, a three here I'm getting a pretty good line from this and of course a, the cool thing about these types of pins is that you know you could get thicker lines depending on the pressure you uh, apply Right. Um, the dip pin and the fountain pin are really cool there is a learning curve. I'm going to leave that for a technical pen, that hand, because it's a little fine. There is a learning curve to them. It probably the brush is the hardest to control, but it also gives you a really nice line as well. Very flowy. Like, technical pens, I think, give a, a, the least interesting line. But sometimes you want the least. Like, these are not interesting lines here. But I just want straight lines, dependable, straight. Technical pens are best suited for that. Um, okay. Well, what do you think of the current Disney stuff? 
from what you've seen? To be honest, I haven't really kept up with Disney into its current state. Um, the most recent one I've really seen is like Moana, and that's a few years old now, I believe. So I, I still like their stories a lot. I still think it's important to have the really hopeful, like, overly happy, you know, good things happen. Yeah, um, and I, I know think Disney so. can sometimes have what people might call a dark side. Um, I mean, for example, Elsa and Anna's parents both die in Frozen. And, like, in Tarzan, you know, his parents also are eaten by a jaguar. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I think as, like, young children, you don't necessarily... It's kind of very subtle. Mm-hmm. And there's not really... Per, per, there's not really, like, lessons to be learned. I see. The way that the fairy tales used to kind of teach them. They used to be, like, a very important part of oh, yeah. the culture. and. Um, well, that's what we try to do, like, good comic creators do. Um... You know, comics are often morality tales. You know, yeah. superhero comics, I should say. You know, like, there is something to be taken away. Um, a lot of the good ones, you know what I mean? Something to be taken away from, you know, the, the fiction that you read. Yeah. And I, I mean, try to do that as well. But I, I think that stories have just historically always been important for teaching things. And... The things that you read, you kind of do take them in and learn from them, whether you feel like you are or not. It's, you do, it's yeah. It's just a subconscious thing. Um, so I think it can be important for authors, writers, illustrators to kind of remember that they have that type of impact on people. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And a lot of times the best stories, you know, really have something to say. Yeah. You don't have to beat people over the head with it. Like, but um, in a subtle fashion, you can still get your ideas and points across, you know? Right. Um, without preaching to people. Now, th- that's the thing. Most people don't want to be preached to. No. And that's something that a lot of, say, comic creators, like, kind of need to learn. A lot of comic creators use their platforms for, like, mm, political messages and stuff like that but it's not they're not even done in subtle fashion you know they're often like very in your face um and there's no nuance to it at all you know yeah and i would say too when you get into things like political messages that's very subjective Mm -hmm. and you know there's more than one way to think about it there's more than one right way and oftentimes people feel like their thoughts and opinions are the only ones. Yeah. Or the um, only ones that matter somehow. Yes, and thinking differently at all makes you like an evil person. And I don't think that's like a very um, a healthy way to like go about things, you know. Right. Um, now, of course, there are some things that are just... There, there, there is black and white in, in certain cases, and I think we all know that. But if we are kind of being intellectually honest and, you know, having perspective, then we also know that there is a lot of gray area in between those black and whites in, in, in certain cases, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and when you lose track of that and you think only your way matters... Only, only your idea is the one worth being mentioned or discussed or considered. Then you know you you go into very dangerous territory, I think. And unfortunately, a lot of people you know fall fall uh, victim to that sort of thinking. You know, as for Zatswan here, I really don't um, have any thing like that. It it is like a comic that's meant to make you think on certain topics. First and foremost, it's escapist superhero fun. But I do go over topics somewhat like religion. Um, But what I like to do is for the reader to make decisions for themselves. I kind of just present, there's there's this and there's that. What do you think about it? Like, I present this and I present that. 
I don't tell you what is right or what is wrong, and I don't make suggestions about what is right or what is wrong. I actually just present an idea and then present an opposing idea, and that is that. Like, the, then the reader, um, you know, can figure out for themselves what they think. That's the way I go about it, you know. And when you do that, because honestly, with the ideas in Zatswan, the thing about it is that I know what it's like to think both ways. Like, I know what it's like to think th this way, and I know what it's like to think the opposing way, because at different points in my life, I have thought one of those two ways. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I know what it's like to think that and to not think that. Um, and I think just ultimately, every person's going to feel differently, and it's important for them to make their own decisions on how they feel, and not yeah. to be told how to feel. Nobody likes that. Nobody likes that. Or I will say people tend not to. People tend not to like being preached to when they're not looking for that. And they're often not looking for that. Especially when they sit down to like read colorful superheroes and adventures and stuff, you know? Yeah. Th those are my thoughts on it. Uh, okay, so this has been going on quite a while. So we're going to close things up here. Um, I hope that this was useful to people, or you just liked hanging out with us while we were doing comics. I'll talk to all of you guys um, pretty soon, and be sure to check out my own comic, Zatswan, at zatswan.com. Uh, is there anything you want to say to close things out? No. I think I'm good. Okay. All right, everybody. I'll see you soon. Take care.